Well, we have a lot of offensive firepower, for one. You know, um, our guys had a, a motivated spirit today after uh, the game one loss. And, um, you know, want to make sure we yeah, we were in attack mode. And, um, you know, I think everybody was, was looking to, to attack the paint and think extra pass. Can we mute everything, guys? Whoever's not on mute. Thank you. Uh, Frank, if you, if you wouldn't mind just, uh, just reiterating that last part there. Sorry about that. Mute. Yep, we have a lot of offensive firepower, and uh, our guys had a had a motivated spirit after the game one loss. Uh, we're in attack mode, uh, attacking the paint, but also thinking extra pass basketball. And uh, we had 33 assists, and uh, you know, strong offensive performance. Just want to ask you about uh, Harold specifically with that second unit, the, the efficiency that he had, uh, how he's able to operate from you know what you've seen in practice, what you saw last year, and how he's playing off on your roster. Yeah, simplest way to put it is he catches everything and he finishes everything. <laughs> he's just uh, he's a talented uh, talented guy um, with his rolls to the basket, offensive rebounds. He's just got a great knack for his little hook shots and, and pushes in push shots uh, into paint. You can post him some, and um, you know the reason he was sixth man of the year last year and a reason why we wanted to pick him up. You know he he just had a terrific night, ten for 13, 22 points. How good? Yeah, Brandon, um, you know, it seemed like you guys um, had you know, some mixed success on, on Doncic, but how, how do you feel like that defensive plan worked for, you know, early in the year against a, a really high power star? Yeah, probably not good enough. Um, you know, luckily our offense was clicking the way it was. But, you know, I, I do think that we did a, a decent job uh, on the three-point line. This team's capable of making 20-plus threes if you, if you overcommit to your helps. And... Uh, you know, we just try to compete as, as best we can uh, with Luca uh, in terms of, you know, shooting a low percentage, uh, keeping him from from making a lot of threes, and uh, like I said, trying not to overhelp and and open up their three point game. Hey, hey Frank, um, is one of the hopes with this roster that you might be able to close games like you did tonight with either LeBron or AD on the bench because? Of kind of the firepower you have, and is that one of the advantages? Of yeah, and it's it's a dual it's a dual purpose thing. You know, we want to get uh, you know our depth enough reps, uh, whether it's returning guys or new guys, uh, to get their legs on them, to get get their rhythm and timing up. Um, you know, while also uh, managing LeBron and Anthony's minutes early in the season, and um, you know, obviously, anytime you can build a lead up enough where you can sit your starters uh, towards the end of the game, you know, that's always a positive. Did you ever come close to putting him back in at all during that stretch? Uh, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, cautious of, of how like, a game can turn. So, you know, I didn't really, uh, you know, I never really mentally have them uh, completely out of the game until I empty the bench. Is the minimum? Frank, what was the, uh, the the part of the offensive explosion do you feel like is most responsible for? You shoot almost twice as well from the three that you did in opening night against the Clippers. Is there a point where you guys find rhythm as a team because you haven't had that much time together? Is it a mix of the looks you're getting uh, against the Mass defense? What can you account for that? Well, I think it starts with, with LeBron and Anthony, you know, playing at a high level. Uh, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense to, to, to commit, and those guys are, are willing passers. So, um, you know, you move the ball, the basketball around with the firepower that we have and, and commit to the open shot. Uh, you know, we're going to shoot a high percentage. And I, I'd also say, you know, we just, we just have a number of guys playing well. You know, obviously Trez, um, you know, Dennis, with his ability to get in the paint and, uh, and create for others. Uh, Kuz played well. Um, you know, a lot of guys have played well individually. But, again, when you have the – the type of guys that we we have that can attack and still make uh, extra passes when the help comes, you know, you have a chance to have, uh, you know, to produce the way we did tonight. Jovan? Hey, Frank. Um, the other day you said that you you told Kyle that you wanted him to bring energy on both ends of the floor. What did you think of his energy tonight? You know, he had a couple offensive rebounds, nice block defensively, but what did you make of his performance? Yeah, I think he's uh, he's playing at a high level, you know. And uh, what I think he really uh, improved upon last year is impacting the game in ways other than scoring. And you know, that means a defensive effort, uh, the defensive glass, 
blocking shots uh, like he did tonight on that one uh, you know, one help side play. Um, you know, and then offensively, you know, whether he has the ball or not, he's going to be really, really active. You know, crashing the glass, cutting to the basket, uh, moving out the basketball, and then obviously he, he has the ability to to get hot uh, the way he did tonight as well. So um, just a very versatile guy. It's a you know a reason why we have a strong belief in the young man, and he was a big part of the win tonight. All right, we're going to take a few more. Uh, Melissa Rowan. Hey Frank, you guys had a 35 to nothing advantage uh, in second chance points. What does that say about your aggressiveness and focus? Yeah, well, we we want to be a team that that crashes. Um, you know, obviously we lost uh, you know two lead offensive rebounders in in Javale and Dwight, and we're a little bit different at center position. Um, but when we have a, a five out look, you know, we want to encourage our guys to be to be perimeter crashers, and. Um, you know, I thought the bigs and, and our perimeter guys were, were active. That's a that's a play hard type of habit is making sure we're we're honoring the offensive glass, not playing one shot basketball. And I loved our commitment to that part of the game tonight. And then defensively, uh, this team uh, really embarrassed us last year uh, with their perimeter crashing, and um, you know put up high offensive rebounders rebounding totals against us. So that was a big point of emphasis in the game plan tonight is to limit them on the glass. So zero second chance points. Uh, really remarkable for, for our team this early in the season. All right, two more. Jordan Richard. Hey, Frank. Can you um, just talk a little bit about Dennis Schroeder? You know, he does a lot of stuff that he that is, he isn't even on a stat sheet. You know, he picks up full court, you know, uh, in isolation, um, post-up situations. He does a great job on Luca and then 18 points, six assists today, and is efficient. Can you just explain, like, how he's picking up the offense and, He's doing a real good job defensively. And Dennis is a dynamic player, you know, and uh, there's a reason we're so excited to have him here. Um, you mentioned some of those things, you know, he's uh, he's a pest defensively, picking up full court, has great containment ability, long arms uh, to get his hands on, on, on the ball and deflect the ball. And, you know, what he can do to our team uh, better than anyone else is, is really get in the paint. You know, and, and his ability to, uh, you know, wreak havoc on the defense, create things for others, uh, and really flatten out the D, um, along the along with the fact that he, he could shoot the ball from range. So, you know, like I said, he's a dynamic player and, and also a big part of the win tonight. Last one, Rashawn Halak. Hey, Coach. Uh, is it safer to say, for going back to LeBron, is it safer to say more 25 to 30 or more 30 to 35 in terms of minute range early in this part of the season? And then also, how long is too long for him to sit um, before you're comfortable, you know, being able to reinsert him into a game? You know, there, there's no fine line in terms of when I would reinsert him. Uh, you know, you just feel, feel out the game. You know, if there's an opportunity to close it, uh, you know, without extra minutes from him, uh, we'll, we'll try to do so. Um, you know, and I don't have a, a firm number in terms of what, uh, what his minutes should look like each night, each, each night, other than just being responsible with it, you know, the best, uh, the best of our, our ability.